All right, so in this video, let's talk about Google Script Run in web apps. So usually you use it to basically connect your front end with your back end. So if I go here and create a back end function, and for now, I'll just get some data from our spreadsheet. So I'll just go put something in this A1 cell in the sheet one. So now we should be able to run this function and basically get this data here. Let's try to make sure we give this access first. So I'm gonna do this to get, and I'm gonna run it. So there it is. Now we have all the access we need to do what we need. So we should be able to now call this function, get data to go get this information from this cell from here. So for that, let's just create a button here. And give it some sort of ID. And then let's make some script here to run that backend function basically. And to do so, we'll create a function. And we'll run that function when we click on this button. So we'll do document get element by ID. And we'll add an event listener. And that event right now is going to be click. And when we click on that button, we want to run this get data from server function. And I'm going to, for now, just do an alert. Let's make sure this button works. So I'm just going to open my test deployments. Click get now and see we got our alert high there, which comes from that. Thing. So now let's try to get this information from here, from this get data function in our backend from our server side and basically just alert that. So for that, we would have to use Google script run, right? So we do google.script.run and to run that function, we're going to basically call that function, which is called get data case sensitive like so, and that should run that function, but to get the results back from that function, we need to chain this with success handler. And that is going to accept a callback. So we'll have something returned from this. So we'll do some variable name for that return. I'm gonna call it data. And then for that return, Right there, we can now alert that data right here. So if I save this and we go back and click on that button, let's make sure we refresh this first. See, it takes a little bit, but then it calls that back end and it returns Apple, which comes back from the spreadsheet. If we go to the spreadsheet and do like pairs, Go back and click on that same button. Now it's going to say pairs because now we're interacting with our back end to go get that data here. Now this with success handler is the part that handles if this function runs successfully, this get data. But if anything goes wrong, so let's say this sheet was changed to sheet two. So now it's not going to be able to get the data here, right? There's no sheet one anymore. So if we go back and click on that button, it's just gonna be a silent fail. We're never gonna know that this failed from this user side. Let's actually make sure we refresh this, but it doesn't matter. So as you can see, nothing. It fails in the background, but we don't actually see that fail. We should be able to see that fail if we go to executions here, 
and see we get that failed. And if we click on this, see it gets us this that it's not able to get the range of null because it was not able to get the worksheet. Now, how can we get something better for the user if there is some sort of error? And that's where if that function gets an error, we can use the second part. Instead of success handler, we basically handle the failure. And that is gonna go here. So I'm just gonna do this. And again, this is gonna have some sort of variable and we'll have some sort of callback here. So we can just alert, for example, right now I'll just do some string, some text, something like that. So at this point, if I had save, go back and refresh this, click on this get now, see when it fails, it says error occurred. But if I go back and rename this to sheet one, should be able to work and get that data. So now I get pairs, which is that data from that other worksheet. So now we have the handling of our failed requests and our success requests here. Now let's try to also output that ER variable that comes from this error. So I'm gonna save that, go back. And if I do get now, well, right now there's no error. So we get this, we should actually refresh this. But again, if I click on this, that's that. If I go back and again, change this to something that doesn't exist for our script, at least it doesn't exist. If I click this, see now it says cannot read property. So basically that error message that I used to read in a console, now I'm able to basically get that error here as the results of this variable right there. So if you wanted to give that particular message, as you can see, we can, but if you want to just type some random output here, you could do that as well. So that's our regular Google script run function, and we could use it exactly the way it is, but sometimes that might not be very intuitive to have this like weird structure of when we get our data, see there is this weird callback thing here, then there's other callback, and then there's this get data function. Now we could basically take this and use promise API in JavaScript to have a little different syntax instead of having this. And that we're gonna cover in our next video.